Hello and welcome back to the Shepherd's Crook Podcast. Today we are going to talk about not being a scoffer and we're going to talk about specifically the difference between being a scoffer and proper discernment. We're going to use Matt Chandler as a case study and I'm going to show you a way or tell you of a way that I really messed up and was acting like a scoffer rather than a brother and my wife, God used my wife to call me out on it. I'm going to tell you about it and then I'm going to hopefully diagnose an issue that I see in our current day that I think is doing exactly what I was about to do or that I did. And then we'll get into a more biblical way. So first, I want to tell you, though, about Duckworth. I'm wearing this Duckworth hoodie right now. I'm actually wearing a Duckworth t-shirt underneath that. And I really love this company. I took this sweatshirt out camping this last weekend. We had our boys trail life camp out or the, the trailman camp out this weekend. And I spent a ton of time around a fire, wore this hoodie, stayed warm. And I'm going to, I don't even have to wash it. It's just, it, it holds up nice. Love it. And I'm about to interview actually one of the people that work with Duckworth, the president of the company. Very excited to talk to him. And the whole month of March, going to be doing a giveaway. You want to check out Duckworth as a company, doing really cool things. And if you want pieces of clothing that you'll have to save a little bit for, you may have to just go out and buy it if you if you want it, uh, wait for a sale or something like that, or ask for it for Christmas. These are, are pieces of clothing that will last you a very, very long time. And these are pieces of clothing that I think are just uh, worth it. They're awesome. The only thing I wish I would have done is I, I wish I would have got a size smaller. I wish instead of a medium, I would have got a small hoodie, but is what it is. It's just, uh, it's big on me. That's okay. Just if you're going to order, keep that in mind. Okay. We're going to pray. And then we're going to talk about not being a scoffer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this time. Ask for blessing upon it. Lead, help us to be faithful to you. And with brothers in Christ that are in error, help us to not act like Joe Rogan acts towards Christians. Help us to act like brothers act towards other brothers. Help us to Correct publicly those who need to be corrected publicly. Help us to to love people and, and try to win them back to the truth when they're walking in error and not just publicly mock them like the wicked mock the righteous. So help us. I trust you're going to. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. One other thing I wanted to remind you about is the intensive May 16th through the 18th. If you are in driving distance or even if you want to fly in, fly in for it. We would love to have you there. It's a phenomenal trip. If you don't know about it, you can follow the link in the show notes. A.D. Robles is going to be speaking this year. Matt Reynolds is going to be speaking this year. I'm going to be speaking as well. We're going to have time to fish. We're going to be shooting guns. We're doing arm wrestling competition. We're doing a strongman competition. There's going to be a great swag bag as always. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. Really good food. All the costs are covered. 175 or 300, depending upon if you want a tent camp or if you want to, if you want to have a cat or asleep in a cabin. So just let me know, reach out to me and would love to have you there. Bring your church group, bring some, if it's a father and son trip you, you, that you want, then this is the the kind of thing with, we would love to have you. Love you. Love to have you at. It's a great trip. So Eminence, Missouri, May 16th through the 18th. Okay. Let's talk about what it means to be a scoffer. Okay. Psalm one. Here's what it says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. What is a scoffer biblically? I'm reading through Nehemiah right now and think about Sanballat and what he does to the people of God. He, he's a scoffer. Think about modern day scoffers. A scoffer is somebody who mocks righteousness, mocks the truth, mocks the living God or those that follow, follow living God. That, that's a scoffer. And we see that it's pretty, pretty pervasive from society to society. And we see it in our day. People like Joe Rogan are, are a scoffer. The popular atheists of our day, they are scoffers. Uh, who else would be a scoffer in the public realm? Taylor Swift is a scoffer. We, we have all these people that we know are scoffers of the truth. And the warning for us as the believer is to not sit in the seat of scoffers. And this is one of the things that has been troubling to me. And I've been talking to Jordan about it. I've been talking to my buddy behind the scenes. I'm going to be having on, on the show with me uh, here soon. We're going to be doing another episode on this. And this idea is that Christians in functioning in the gifting of discernment, Christians who know their Bible, are calling out other Christians or people who name the name of Christ, not just pervade, not just, not just, um, not just progressive Christians that need to be called out publicly because they're not Christians at all, but calling out brothers in a way that is in line with what Rogan does to the righteous. Rather than functioning in the local context, we, we are functioning more of a national, like like a national prophet. And it, it seems like there's more and more people who want to walk in discernment ministry, public discernment ministry, that see themselves more as a, as a prophet who are uh, being used by God to correct the church as a whole. So the Big C Church and the type of ministry that they're functioning in is very much this scoffing ministry where it's it's mocking and ridiculing. 
there is a place for holy mockery. I mean, God scoffs at the wicked. So if you think about this, uh, we are warned against scoffers laughing at the idea of Christ's return. Um, the wisdom literature repeat, repeatedly, it warns us against uh, not becoming scoffers. And yet God jeers at the feeble ep- efforts of those who oppose him. We see that in, in the Psalms. So there is a righteous way to be a scoffer. But I think this example will will delineate what I'm talking about in, in a helpful manner. Okay. So Chandler, years ago, 2018, he was talking, Matt Chandler was talking to a group of leaders. And this was the famous sermon in which he described talking to a firm about wanting to hire a black pastor for one of their church plants. The firm came back to him and they said, if we have a black seven, and this was in a scale, a grading scale of one ten. The idea is the 10 is the best, most qualified pastor. The one is basically an unqualified pastor, I guess. I don't know on their scale if that means unqualified or just barely qualified. But the question was, Matt, Pastor Matt, would you want a black seven or a Anglo? Okay, we'll say white, white eight. So the eight would be more qualified biblically, but the seven would be less qualified. The only difference would be the color of skin. And Chandler said, I would pick the black seven over the white eight. Okay. Now fast forward. And I want to tell you how I was functioning more like a scoffer. And and what I'm trying to do is do this differently in this episode, not just scoff at a brother, but really call him out of error. Not that he'll probably ever hear this, but this kind of what kind of thinking is pretty pervasive. So we can hopefully help those who may be erring in this and then bring them back to the truth. Okay. So there was a post that the village made announcing a new pastor at their church. And it was a a man and his wife, a white man and his white wife, white family. And it was just a, a good looking family. And probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't know this family at all. I've never seen their names or anything like that. But they were hired as, he was hired as a pastor of the village church. And somebody had posted, I really wanted to say this it, uh, must be, or th- this looks like an Anglo 8 if I've ever seen one or something like that. And I responded, well, I'll do it. And I jumped on Instagram and I posted it. Uh, on the comments, I said, uh, definitely looks like an Anglo eight or something like that, something to that effect. And I was talking with Jordan. She's like, that's not the right way to do it. That's just not the right way to do it. That's more like a scoffer than it is a, a godly man. Cause we, we don't know. I don't know that pastor at all, but uh, what I was responding to was something that happened in 2018 and, and then doing that in a way that now looking back on it was less than helpful. I hope an episode like this would be a whole lot more helpful. And this is what I encourage want to encourage you to be thinking through is how we correct people publicly or how we correct people privately matters, how we do it. We want to do it in a biblical manner. We don't do it in a mocking manner. There is a place for holy mockery and Christians are to scoff or, or have this kind of holy mockery that God has. And we need to know who we can scoff and at what situations it's appropriate to scoff and then who we are to correct in what situations it's, it, it is appropriate to correct. And so this whole situation, uh, it could have been done better. And and this is, I, I think a better way. So instead of that, it would have been an easier thing just to do an episode like this. And instead of mocking that, just critique it, just critique it, the implications of what Matt Chandler said in 2018, and then just say there, there's a better way. Okay. So let's do that. Let's, Let's do something more than scoff. Let's not be a scoffer. And what I see in Christianity right now with good Christians back and forth is a scoffing spirit on even lesser matters. So, for instance, if you believe that head coverings have to be cloth and not just feminine hair, then what ends up happening back and forth is scoffing. If you in different categories like that, whatever it may be, it's it's scoffing. Gifts of the Spirit. If you believe in all the gifts of the Spirit, or if you don't believe in all the gifts of the Spirit, they're scoffing back and forth rather than a recognition of things that we can be different on. And it's okay that we're different on. And instead, I think this, this James spirit is more appropriate because there is a massive purity spiral in denominations. I'm seeing it not just in denominations, but also in the broader conservative Christian circles. And even the, the quote unquote based using their term, uh, terminology circles, there is a growing and growing purity spiral. And instead, I think there's a better way. Here's what it says in James chapter five, verse 19. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So this is a command to brothers on how we should approach each other who are wandering and uh, wandering from the truth. So back in 2018, hopefully there were some brothers that Chandler had that said, hey man, you're way off here. You are elevating color of skin. 
and you're making it a category of qualification that First Timothy chapter 3 doesn't have, or that Titus chapter 1 doesn't have. The, this is not to be considered when you're thinking about who's going to be pastoring the congregation. You want to get the most qualified man. You don't want to just get the most qualified man who happens to be a particular color. Because the implications of those sorts of things linger on years down the road. I mean, it's there. I was thinking about it. It's 2024, six years after that comment. Chandler has never publicly repented of that. And so what ends up being declared to people at the Village Church or uh, people more broadly is when you make the announcement, we've got this new white pastor and his wife and family, what is in people's minds, wasn't there a, was there no black seven? Where's the black seven? What? Was there not any qualified black guys? Why, why aren't they hiring the black seven? That lingers in people's minds. It, it just sticks there. And if that thing isn't publicly repented of, then you see how Chandler can continue to wander from the truth. And anybody who thinks in that kind of way, with that kind of thinking, there's a there's a wandering from the truth that we need to be corrected about. Anytime we add qualifications to the scriptures for what a pastor is supposed to be, then we're we're doing something that is is prohibited from and uh, by God's word, and we need some sort of correction. So if anyone is wanders from wanders from the truth, so in that particular category, Chandler is wandering from the truth. What I don't want to be is a scoffer to him. I don't want to act like Joe Rogan acts like to Christians as a brother. What I would want to do publicly and what I would want to try to do right now, if some, somehow this ends up uh, in, in the hands or ears of anybody at the Village Church, then hopefully there's been some public repentance of this. Not not that I'm aware of at this point, after six years later. But if somebody wanders from the truth, then someone brings them back, then that's a glorious thing. Their soul is saved and there's a multitude of sins covered. That's how we are to function with one another. And so the, what I really want to just appeal to is making sure that church discipline is not done by, or correction from brother to brother isn't done by way of scoffing. And that's what I was corrected by. That's what Jordan said. I don't think that's right. That's a, Scoffing is not the way that accountability or church discipline or loving rebuke is supposed to happen. Loving rebuke is supposed to be in the context of understanding that we are brothers in Christ. And, and that's the case. I, I think with Chandler that he is a brother in Christ that has erred in some of the things that he's taught and has not publicly repented of those. And I hope he does publicly repent of those. But I don't need to sit at the feet of scoffers. I don't. I, I need to avoid what Psalm 1 calls me to do. And if you find yourself like that, where you're correction of other people, you're always correcting, you're always upset, you're always scoffing, you're always mocking, you're always ridiculing, you're always memeing, which can be really funny. It, you may need to hear the corrective word, hey, there's a better way to do this. Don't learn from Rogan how to love brother, how to mock or scoff more than you learn from the scriptures, how to love brothers and call, call each other out biblically. And that's my challenge to you today. There is a, a difference between a loving rebuke a public rebuke, like this particular passage, Chandler needs to repent, or this particular instance, Chandler needs to repent from, from what he said, and the effects of that linger on for not just his church, but a massive amount of people that he has influence over. There's a difference between those two kinds of things. So don't be a scoffer, but correctly and lovingly correct your brothers and sisters in Christ when they need to be corrected, as you are corrected when you need to be corrected. When we are walking in sin, we don't need to be scoffed. We need to be lovingly rebuked. There's a difference there. Okay, thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day and pass it along if it's been helpful. I really appreciate it and uh, keep coming back. Thanks a ton.